welcome to Empowering and welcome to Anatomy 101. My name is Caroline and I will be guiding you through this video lesson. In this video, we're going to go over the different muscles of the chest, abdomen, the pelvis, and the back. This is the 23rd video in this video course. In order to view all of the other videos in the course, make sure you look at the link above. Now, we're going to go over a lot of different muscles in this video, but we're going to do it in a very fun, entertaining, and visual way. There's just no way around it when it comes to anatomy. Sometimes you just have to go through things one at a time, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. If you like this video and you wanna see more videos like it, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. Also, post a comment and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. Sorry, so much I'm asking you to do. <laughs> Anyways, we have a lot of information to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. Following, move the pectoral girdle. First is the rhomboid muscle that is divided into major and minor and connects the posterior vertebrae column to the flat scapula and functions to cause elevation and retraction of the scapula. The second is the levator scapula that connects the upper cervical vertebrae to the broad and flat scapula and also causes an elevation in the scapula when it contracts. Serratus anterior is the last muscle and causes the scapula to move downward in an anterior fashion when it contracts and is the muscle that causes the shoulders to move forward. The diaphragm is a skeletal muscle that has a central tendon of origin and inserts into the ventrolateral aspect of L1 to L3 and on aponeurosis accurate ligaments. The costal part of the diaphragm links with the xyloid process and the lower six ribs. It supports the respiratory process. The intercostal muscle is also a supporting muscle in respiration and regulates the respiratory rhythm. They link up with the ribs dorsally. Dorsally means the upper back region. They arise from the tubercles of the ribs dorsally and join the costochondral junction from one rib to the next. In contrast to the thorax, the abdomen lacks muscular support laterally laterally meaning to the side, and anteriorly meaning frontal. Instead, it has tough, flat muscles that links to the pelvic girdle and the vertebral column and the rib cage. In order to provide attachment for the abdominal muscle, there is a connective tissue named linea alba that arises from the xylate process and runs all the way anteriorly to the pubis symphysis. Anterior means towards the front. The four abdominal muscles are the transverse abdominis, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis is the most popular and forms the six pack. Some people like to say they have a 12 pack, but that's debatable. The internal oblique is a flat and broad muscle occurring inferior to the external oblique and arises from the pelvic girdle all the way up to the ribs. They get their name because the name oblique implies that it is slanting. The external oblique muscle is thin and also moves in slanting fashion up from the ribs to the pelvic girdle while being attached to the connective tissue linea alba. Its contraction causes contraction of the abdominal cavities contents and both the external and internal oblique muscles function the same. The transverse abdominis is below the internal oblique muscle and run all the way from the lower lumbar vertebrae to the lower ribs and to the broad iliac bone all the way up to the bones of the pubic region and connects with the linea alba tendon with similar function to the internal and external oblique muscles. 
The last is the rectus abdominis, and it is also strap-like muscle that is long and centrally located in the midline and links the ribs and central sternum to the lower pubic bones. It appears segmented due to the three fibrous bands that cross the muscles across the transverse plane, making it appear segmented, forming the famous six-pack. It assists all the other muscles in the abdominal compression and also causes the vertebral column to flex. Pelvic underside has two major muscle sheets, namely the urogenital diaphragm, that is much deeper, and the pelvic diaphragm. The pelvic diaphragm is part of the pelvic cavity floor and consists of the levator ani and coccygenus muscles. Levator ani is flat and forms the floor and connects posteriorly to the midline with the aid of a ligament. In contrast, on the anterior side, they are divided into the two sexes, differing with the male gender by the anal canal and the urethra and the female gender anal canal and the urethra, in addition to the vagina. They provide support to the pelvic viscera and act like a sphincter in females in the vaginal canal and in both males and females it assists the anal canal. Coccygenus, the last pelvic diaphragm muscle, is shaped like a fan and assists the levator ani. The last group of pelvic muscle sheets is the urogenital diaphragm and it consists of four muscles. The first one is the bulbospongensis muscle that surrounds the penis and forms the wall of the vagina. It is also used to urinate and assist in erection in males and also the erection of the clitoris in females. A second urogenital diaphragm muscle is the superficial transverse perineum that is made up of muscle fiber bundles and assists in providing support to the pelvic viscera. The third muscle is the ischiocavernosus muscle that is tendon-like and provides an erecting assistance to the clitoris and penis. The sphincter urethra, they originate from the ischial and the pubis bones. They perform functions as the urethral sphincter to allow the excretion of urine. Posterior thoracic muscles have an effect on the scapula. The trapezius muscle causes the rotation of the scapula and pulls down the shoulder, the rhomboid major, and causes elevation, retraction, and rotation of the scapula. The rhomboid minor muscle's contraction causes the retraction and elevation of the scapula. The levator scapula solely causes the elevation of the scapula. The serratus anterior pulls the scapula downwards in an anterior direction. And finally, the pectoralis minor pulls the perspective scapular forward and also downward in addition to raising the ribs. All right guys, I really hope you liked that video going over the muscles of the chest, abdomen, pelvis, and back. I hope you learned a ton. Make sure you stay tuned because in the next video we're going to go over the muscles of the shoulders and the arms. We are also going to learn about abductors, adductors. We will learn about flexors and extensors of the arm, including, but not limited to, the triceps, the biceps, the carpi ulnaris, and more. So definitely make sure you stay tuned for that video. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you join all of the other students and become a member of my channel. There you will find my program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology. This program has been around for several years, but I finally made it super easy to get, and all you have to do is become a member of this channel and you will have immediate access. In this program, I share with you specific tips on how I went from failing anatomy to acing it. These tips really do work. I've shared these tips with thousands of students and they've been able to get the grades they wanted also. So make sure you look into that. All right guys, I will see you in the next video. Love you. Bye.